What is going on guys? Welcome to the channel. It's Warcrux here. Thank you for watching the massacre at the beginning of the video. Um, took, took your guys' suggestions on putting clips at the beginning. Just kind of keep you guys enthralled a little bit see what I'm working on. I really appreciate that. This is my sixth attempt on trying to do this video without fucking up too bad. So, here I am. Um, this is a super OG build I ran like three years ago and I decided hey let's try to bring it back into the current meta and see how it holds up and I'm not gonna lie in a lot of a lot of instances this outperforms any mythic item you could possibly re be running so if you don't have access to a mythic item or you want something cheap and easy to put together for like a magic of sorcery this is the way to go like it this shit wrecks so let's hop right into it Ring and High Elf, you can either run Breton or Dark Elf, does not matter in the least. Be with Sugar Skulls because we do not have a direct heal, having the health recovery on this is very, very nice. Ring the Mage Mundus, here's the stat sheet's front bar. <coughs> Unbuffed, and now we have it buffed. And here's a back bar, just so you guys have a reference. Now let's hop right into the steps. We're not going to waste any time on this because I've wasted so much time recording this video. So first step, running spinners. Probably one of the best five-piece damage sets in the game. You can run this on your front bar only. Running a Nernhone trait, you can either run Nernhone, Infuse, or Sharpen. Nernhone and Sharpen is pretty much the same damage-wise, um, but Infuse does offer more single-target damage. So if you want to go that way, um, definitely do that. Running a weapon damage enchantment. Next, running willpower. This is only on our back bar. Defending on the sword running sturdy on the shield this is to give us around 50k max magic on our back bar which you have super super beefy big dick heals because of that running poisons because we're not live attacking often but when we do it'd be nice to have a poison proc next up running the engine guardian this set is if you're going to run a monster set on a sorcery this is the one because it gives you health that's awesome we don't have direct heal it gives you magia even better it gives you stamina that's awesome too because you run dark conversion and you just convert all that stamina gives you over to a magica so you pretty much have you know basically endless sustain if you really play around your engine guardian procs and dark conversion pretty well in addition it tanks a lot of shots you can line of sight behind it and plus your wards make it even tankier because your wards get applied to your engine guardian. So if you really want to be a cuck, you can just line sight behind your engine guardian and to really piss people off, which I thoroughly enjoy doing. Crafty, a pretty basic magic source for set. Gives you a shit ton of damage, max of magic, and the max of magic, as you guys know, helps bolster your shields. Rank 511, obviously. All the traits are in pin. You can run in pin, well fitted, sturdy. Any combination of those three is just fine. Spinners, 
for the jewelry and uh, running all recovery right now you can probably get away with running one spell damage uh, to be honest so that does it for the gear potion wise you pretty much only need to run two to three potions I have them on you um, tripods is what I use on the regular because it gives you re recoveries and everything health recovery stamina magic up to 40% now not just 20% alliance spell drop if your little one goes super cheap uh, this gives you crit on the front bar which I'm currently lacking so this is not bad plus you can just buy with alliance points and last but not least you gotta have detection pause for night blade it sucks you gotta have to uh, semi counter a class but it is what it is hop into the skills rain crystal fragments haunting curse this is our flex spot I'll come back to this Crushing Shock, the reason I like Crushing Shock over anything else, it feels less clunky, clunky, it pairs really well with Critical Surge, because each time you crit, you get healed for a flat amount, so you're pretty much guaranteed a heal every time you spam Crushing Shock, and Balance on the back bar kind of coincides with that, so you keep Balance up, you have several people jumping on you, odds are something's going to crit on them, so you get all this passive healing for virtually doing nothing, it's a really good sustain tool, plus Critical Surge gives you major sorcery. Uh, running Streak, uh, this is probably the best skill in the sort kit. This is your Get Out of Jail free card. This is your CC. Now, if you're on console, it's difficult to use Streak as your CC because you can, you're can you limited to your turn speed. So I would run Streak and then uh, maybe Destructive Clinch uh, for your flex spot. Um, just so you can get Aura Rune Cage for a reliable CC. Then running the Charge Astro, you could also run Shooting Star. I like running the Charge Astro because you can hide behind it. The AoE actually does a pretty good amount of burst. And since I'm running mine, so you have EG, you have uh, Frank, which, you know, the Astro. And plus you have Mines that kite around. It's super, super good if you're in solo play. I love it. So yeah, back to the flex spot. Uh, you can run uh, Daedric Mines, which is my favorite, obviously. You can run Execute, Inner Light, Clinch. Um, those are your other options. Um, thing to note about, or Ellie Drain. Thing to note about the Execute. Blob ESO did a video uh, a couple years ago about how Inner Light just intrinsically gives you more damage, even if um, Endless Fury procs, which is your execute. So if you're going to run and execute in this spot, I would just suggest running Inner Light. It gives you crit, which is going to help out with your healing. Plus, it makes everything else do a little bit more damage. So it's kind of keep that in mind. It's a play style. Depends how you want to play. But personally, I would go with Inner Light over execute any day. Back bar running Dark Conversion, like I mentioned earlier. Running Harden and Dampen. And then Critical Surge and Balance. Like I said, these two pair very well together. And then last but not least, Temporal Guard. This gives you minor protection on the back bar. It used to be 8%, only 5 now. Still really good. Plus, it helps you with repositioning for those outplay potentials when you're jumping off cliffs and such. Alright, there's that. We're going to hop right into the champion points. I'm going to let you guys kind of sift through this yourself. Pause it if you need to. Mooncalf points could be allocated elsewhere. Um, I just have them here for now. Even maybe even healthy would be nice, to be honest. Tumbling, Shadow Ward. Blessed, Elfborn. You guys can read, I hope. This, this, and this. Now, you guys will have 14 extra more points. That's kind of redundant. 14 extra more. Anyway, English is hard. English hard. But uh, you'll have 14 extra points than what I have. So just allocate those elsewhere. It's not going to make or break your build by any means. So, yeah, uh, that really does it for the build guys i really hope you enjoyed it super cheap easy to attain it's super effective as you guys saw at the beginning of the clip and 80 percent of you guys are not currently subscribed um that clip at the beginning i did do this on stream so if you want to be around live for that please hit the notification bell like comment whatever this has been horcrux hopefully you guys have have a great weekend and deuces